Hey guys, welcome back. I'm moving on to question 10 part B of the CXC CSEC mat January 2012 paper 2. Part B um, tells us that the diagram below, not drawn to scale, shows a vertical pole PL standing on a horizontal plane KLM. The angle of elevation of P from K is 28 degrees, KL is 15 meters, LM is 19 meters, and angle KLM is 115 degrees. Part 1 asks us to copy the diagram and show the angle of elevation of 28 degrees and one right angle. So let me do that in a way that would be clear for you to see. Let me increase the size of this and let me copy the diagram. And there should be a straight line. So if it doesn't come out straight, let's understand that it should be straight. This is P. Drop this. Yes, yeah, so this is the pole that they were talking about. This is L. Let's draw the line from here to here. Let's pull this line down, call this M. And let's draw the line from here to here. And let's connect K and M. And this is the 115 degrees. They told us KL is 15, 15 meters. So this is our 15 meters. Um, LM is 90 meters. So this is our 90 meters. Angle of elevation of P from K is 28 degrees, so this is our angle of elevation, 28 degrees. And this is one of the right angles. And also this is another right angle. Hmm? So you actually have two right angles in this in this figure. Right? So this is the diagram. This is what the that they were trying this is what they were trying to ex to explain and these are the this here the angle of elevation of 28 degrees and this is the 90 degree angle that they wanted us to draw so i hope that is a that makes the diagram a bit clearer and makes it easier to answer the remainder of the question so let's clear that and move back to the to this part here I already worked out the remaining questions, so I'll just explain the solutions now. So you want to calculate the measure of PL as the length of PL. Okay, so that's the length of the pole here. Well, as we saw before, the length of this pole actually lies on a right angle triangle. And so we can use one of the trigonometric ratios to help us calculate the length. Right. So we want to calculate this length. We know the length of KL. The length of KL is 15 meters. And we know the size of this angle, um, 28 degrees. So let's see which trigonometric ratio we can use. Can we use sine? Well, sine of 28 degrees is, is equal to opposite, which is PL, over hypotenuse, which is KP. We don't know KP, so um, we wouldn't um, we wouldn't try sine. Maybe cosine. Well, cosine of 20 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, we don't know the hypotenuse and we don't want to go through the trouble to calculate the length of the hypotenuse, so you won't use cosine. Probably tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. We know the adjacent, we know the angle, of course, and this is the side we want to find. So, tangent is the perfect ratio to use here. So tangent of the angle, tangent of 28 degrees is opposite, which is PL, over um, adjacent, which is KL. And rearranging that to find PL, we get that PL is equal to 15 tan 28 degrees. Now 15 tan 28 degrees, um, when we work that out, is 7.97564, etc. 
right? And we actually want the answer to two significant figures. So this is one significant figure. This is the second significant figure. So we look at this guy here to help us determine um, if we should add one or leave it alone. So it's greater than or equal to five. So we add one. We add point one here, and so we get eight. Right? But we don't write eight because that's one significant figure. We want two significant figures. So we write eight point zero. Right? So this is the this is the final answer to that question. Okay. The next part asks us to find the length of KM. Unfortunately, KM doesn't lie on um, isn't a side of a right angle triangle. So we can't use sine, cosine, or tangent to, to help us um, in the way that we did before. We maybe we could use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Well, what we realize is that we have KL, we have LM, and we have the size of the included angle. So that hints to us that we should use the cosine rule. Right? We have two sides and an included angle, so we should use the cosine rule. Well, the cosine rule tells us that the length of the side opposite the included angle, all squared, that's km all squared, is equal to lm all squared plus kl all squared minus 2 times lm times kl times cosine of the included angle. That's this here. We have all those values, so we just plug them in and calculate. When we calculate, we would get 28 point. When we calculate, so this is all squared is equal to this. And then we take the square root of both sides and get km is equal to the square root of this thing. So km is equal to the square root of this thing. And when we calculate that, we get 28.75573, etc. And this is our two significant figures. 1, 2, so you look at him, he's greater than or equal to 5, so we add 1 here, so you get 29. So you get 29 meters. That's that. And then we want to calculate the angle of elevation of P from M. Let me clear this. Angle of elevation, well, that's this guy here. We want to calculate the size of that angle. Well, he lies, remember, I showed we had two right angles. We had this right angle here, and we had this right angle here. And so we can use, we can go back to using our trigonometric ratios, because we have we have the length of this side here, of LM. And now we have we have the, um, the length of PL. So maybe using those two guys, we can calculate the size of this angle. Well, this is opposite to this angle. This is adjacent to this angle. So it means we should be using the tangent. So tangent of PL, of the tangent of PML, that's this angle here, is equal to opposite, which is PL over LM. Okay, cool. So I already worked that out here. That's 8. That's the 8 that we got there over the 19. And so uh, tan inverse of 8 over 19 is approximately 23 degrees. And that's how we work out this question.